Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And today we're going to talk about another beauty from La Serpent Collection, the snake collection by Stephen Umberluca, which is going to be Venom Incarnate. Now, as you all know, I was the first one on the whole entire YouTube to do a first impression of the whole entire snake collection before it even hit the market. And I kind of wanted to do that because I wanted to make sure that once it hits the market, if you guys plan to blind buy any of the fragrances from the snake collection, you guys kind of knew what you're getting your nose into. And thank you so much for all the beautiful emails and the DMs on my Instagram. I'm so glad that my information was helpful for you guys to decide which ones to buy. And yes, I'm aware of the fact that God of Fire uh, became a hit fragrance as I predicted, and actually it got sold out. So, uh, but don't worry about it because it's gonna be back in the stores, I believe by September. But today we're going to talk about Venom Incarnate. Now, as I, as I predicted, I knew that a lot of people are going to review this fragrance, uh, but they didn't cover a lot of backstories, a lot of interesting facts about this fragrance, which we're going to cover for you guys today. Believe it or not, Venom Incarnate is not a new fragrance. It is actually 15 years old, and it used to go under the house name Nezanez. And the nose behind the fragrance back then was Stéphane Humberluca and Karine Chevalier, which the name of the fragrance back then was Ombre Assad. So last year, these two artists decided to rework on this unicorn gem for metamorphizing a raw beauty into a unique and luxury wild and well-balanced smoky gourmand strawberry iconic fragrance. So Ambre Assad used to be more on the gourmand strawberry side, which made it more feminine. But after this genius rework, it became more unisex and deeper than it used to be a work of art. All right, so the name Venom Incarnate represents the red color of strawberry as a love potion that is injected into the flesh and the dreams of the soul. It is a delicious poison of a passionate bite. As you all know, Stephanie Merluca and his love for painting, music, and poetry has influenced greatly in creating his work of art. And Venom Incarnate is nothing less but inspiration of all these artistic sources. All right, so let's spray some of this and see what we get. God, this is so good. It's so aromatic. It filled up the whole entire room. It's very powerful. And that strawberry note is to die for. It's so realistic. It's so luscious, so fresh. Also, I feel this like sourness that I never smelled before. Interesting. Very beautiful. And I have to say, this one is a lot richer and deeper than Ambrassade, and it's way more unisex. I think Ambrassade was definitely more on the uh, feminine side. But there's something about this, the gourmand, the sweetness, and there's other stuff which we'll get to that makes it way more unisex. Very beautiful. So uh, Venom Incarnate uh, falls under the amber, fruity, vanilla type of a category, if you guys want to know what category it falls under. And for me, it opens with this realistic, juicy, luscious, mouth-watering strawberry. It opens up fruity sweet, but it has this spicy, herbaceous green vibe to it, which must be coming from wild strawberries, which they have this rich, foresty, yet sweet, fruity odor profile. But you also get this delicious, sweet, gourmand, candy, deep, sensual, rich, creamy, buttery lactonic odor profile as well, which comes from caramel. As you get to the heart of Venom Incarnate, that realistic strawberry turns into this juicy, realistic wild berries because of raspberry and blackberry, which is followed by a strong, woody and sweet, warm, powdery, tenacious, spicy note, which must be coming from cedar and cinnamon. So that strawberry note turns into a mix of these exotic berries. All right, so remember how I mentioned that Venom Incarnate has something that makes it more deeper, richer than uh, Embrassade, where Embrassade is more feminine, but there's something that makes this also more masculine, uh, even though it has a strawberry note to it. It is uh, this accord that actually no reviewer has talked about it. It's this smoky accord that makes this or turns this into 
a work of art. I mean, this turns into a smoky strawberry and it kind of reminds me of one of those places that you go to have hookah shisha, smoke hookah shisha, and you order the uh, strawberry flavor and it has this uh, strawberry and smoky kind of a smell to it. This definitely kind of reminds me on that, but even better, it just smells delicious but yet it has that smokiness to it that completely turns this into a unisex fragrance. So as the fragrance opens up completely, this sweet gourmand herbaceous spicy fruity strawberry or wild berries caramel cord gets counterpointed and bounced out with this beautiful smokiness that comes from the base. Also, Venom Incarnate is a sweet fragrance thanks to big dose of tonka bean and black vanilla in the base. Now, this addictive and stimulating gourmand beauty has an aphrodisiac smell to it, which comes from high quality Russian leather, patchouli, tonka bean, and little incense for the smokiness. Yes, you heard me right. There is some incense in here, which it hasn't been mentioned anywhere in the notes. I know I get my information, trust me, from the right sources. So um, there is some incense in here, which makes it smoky. And I think it definitely turns this fragrance into this beautiful, balance out scent that I was talking about that Ambrassade kind of didn't have that. And this one actually hasn't been mentioned by any reviewers on Instagram nor on YouTube. All right, so there are two other keynotes in the base of Venom Incarnate, which nobody really concentrated on, which is uh, tonka bean and patchouli. Now tonka bean or cumarine is quite big in the base of this scent. From an olfactory standpoint, tonka bean is very rich, suave, and multifaceted. It is primarily gourmand with almond, vanilla, and even caramel notes, but it is also rustic, herbaceous, with notes of cut hay and blonde tobacco. Now, patchouli in this scent definitely adds to the earthy, woody, musky, and mostly spicy and slightly sweet aroma. There is a bit of minty aroma to patchouli as well, which adds to greenness or herbaceousness of venom incarnates. Now back to uh, tonka bean, and now you can see that the tonka bean complements the caramel really nicely in venom incarnate, and it kind of makes sure that that gourmand vibe or the gourmand accord in venom incarnate is carried out through the whole life cycle of it. And it just makes this fragrance such a beauty. All right, so I know this was a lot of information regarding Venom Incarnate, but I wanted you guys to kind of get to know this fragrance really well because it was so important for Stephanie Berluca to bring this 15-year-old fragrance back to life and reintroduce it into the snake collection again. And I'm so glad that he did so because it turned out to be this work of art. And what you guys have in your collection right now is literally a unicorn. So all in all, what you get with Venom Incarnate is that you get this big dose of luscious, realistic strawberry on the opening, which turns into this exotic fruity berries. It's sweet, it's warm, spicy, it's herbaceous, it's fresh, spicy, it's smoky, it's woody. It has a big dose of vanilla in it, and it also has leather in it as well. All right, so as far as the performance and longevity goes, it's a very long lasting fragrance. On my skin, it does 10 plus hours. Now, as far as the uh, projection sillage goes, it has a great projection. On the initial spray, it does five to six feet easily, and after an hour, it gets closer to your skin. Now, as far as the compliments goes, I'm telling you, this one, it has this mass appealing vibe to it. I mean, the notes in here, I mean, you're getting strawberry, a gourmand strawberry. You got strawberry, you got caramel. I mean, what is there not to like? You have patchouli in here, and you got that smoky cord in here, which totally balances out the fragrance. So I personally get a lot of compliments with this. And actually, I had ladies ask me, what is this? And they wanted to wear this for themselves. So I'm telling you, this is very unisex. And I think ladies are going to love this. And now you might think that I'm overhyping this again, but trust me, just like God of Fire, once you get your nose on this, you're gonna be like, God, he's really right. It is a very beautiful fragrance and it is delicious. So you're gonna get a lot of compliments with this. Now, as far as the versatility goes, interestingly, actually, even though it is a sweet fragrance, there is some sour and fresh spiciness to it, which makes it very versatile. 
and the dry down uh, I have to say that smokiness does fade away after a while like after like three hours or four hours that smokiness goes away and it turns into this beautiful gourmand strawberry and um, caramel type of a fragrance which is very beautiful uh, so and it kind of stays fresh as well even though it's sweet and it's kind of warm spicy it kind of stays fresh spicy at the same time so i think it's very uh, versatile at the same time now as far as uniqueness goes i don't even need to go over that this is a very unique strawberry gourmand type of a scent i haven't smelled anything like this besides embrassade which this one is actually even better than embrassade because of that smoky note that i was talking about and that patchouli in here oh it's to die for so it's a very very unique fragrance so you guys that's all i have for venom incarnate if you own this fragrance please let me know in the comment section what's your take on it and if you don't own it i'm telling you you're missing out on this one at least you need to get a sample to check it out and that's it you guys that's all i have thank you so much and hopefully i'll see you guys soon with another video bye